Thank you. Ooh, that's fancy. That's a new feature. All right, everyone. Well, welcome. My name is Ashley de Blasi. I'm the Director of Certification and Conference Program here at IIMC. And I want to welcome you to the 2021 Institute Director Education Chair Colloquium. This year is a little bit different. Obviously, we are virtual. But we've also invited uh, the every association president that we have in our database. We've invited every education chair, as well as all of the institute directors, IIMC staff, and anybody else that wanted to join the meeting. The board of directors is here today, as well as our executive committee. So it should be quite a good group, well-rounded conversation. We are looking to make this three hours as painless as possible, and we will take breaks as needed. If you have prior engagements or other things that you've committed to throughout the time period that you're supposed to be with us today, feel free to jump on and off. We will be recording this meeting. So what we get in terms of that recording and that wrap up, we will definitely send out to everyone at the end of the day or at the end of the, the meeting wrap up portion. So before we get started, a couple of different housekeeping things. Please make sure your microphones are mute uh, just so we don't have any background um, distractions or anything happening. If you wanna say something, you are welcome to raise the hand or unmute if you're prompted to, that is perfect. Remember that the colloquium is for you, for institute directors, association presidents, ed chairs. So we wanna make sure that your voice is heard and that your opinions, feedback, everything is heard, recognized, and definitely taken into account as we move forward wherever IIMC decides to go. For those of you that weren't here in the very beginning, we did ask that you go ahead and rename yourself on your screen, just so we can make sure, one, that your name reads the way that you would like it to read, but also so that we know where you're from. So give us an indication on there of what state you're from, what country you're from, just so we can see where in this beautiful world that you are located. I'm going to do a couple of introductions before we dive into the content today, and I'll make these people spotlighted here. Uh, first one I'm going to spotlight is our communications coordinator, Karen Lee. Karen is our technical guru for today's session. So if you're having trouble with your microphone or you're having issues with camera connections, whatever it may be, go ahead and send a private message in the chat box to Karen. Or you can also email her at karen at iimc.com and we will drop that in the chat box in just a moment here. I'm also going to highlight our communications coordinator, Kelly Sigson. Let me find her. There she is, spotlight. And this is Kelly. She's our education associate in the education department. She works all day, every day with your certification applications for our members and those that are attending your institutes. Kelly, did you want to say hi? Hi, everybody. Nice to see you. All right. Let me remove that one. And then I will also make an introduction to our executive director, Chris Shelby. If you've never met him before, let me spotlight him. There he is. You want to say hi, Chris, or make an introduction? Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for taking the time. And we missed all of you in Grand Rapids at the conference. Hope to see you in Little Rock. Thanks, Chris. All right. I also have our executive committee and our board on here today. But for the sake of time, I'm only going to introduce our current president, Sherry Pierce. Sherry is from Alaska. Let me go ahead and find her here. And then Sherry, I'll have you welcome the group if you don't mind. There she is. Go ahead and unmute Sherry. Oh, okay. yeah, unmuted. Here we go. Oh, good morning, okay. everyone. From Sunny Valdez, Alaska. It's supposed to be 70 degrees here, which is a heat wave for us. So um, I'm I'm excited to be here today to listen to everyone. Um, and it's gonna be a great three hours, I know that. And um, Ashley will help lead us through this, but um, welcome. And thanks for everyone that's joining us this morning. Um, it's gonna be a great year, great year for education. So um, I am looking forward to it. So welcome. Thank you, Sherry. Um, Chris or Sherry, I know the first thing that we have on our agenda is to give a board update about what happened at the board meeting um, when we were in Grand Rapids. And I know there was a couple of things education wise that came down the pipeline. Would either of you like to give that board update? I'm happy to do so, but if you would like to, I would love for that to happen. 
Um, I can give it to Chris, Ashley. I don't have all my notes in front of me this morning. Okay. Um, Chris, do you want to do that or you want me to take care of that? Um, why don't you go ahead since you know it from A to Z? Okay. Yeah, sounds good. So three things are, are coming forward down the pipeline. Um, the first and foremost that we want to make you all aware of is that Athenian dialogues were approved by the IIMC board of directors to be offered virtually permanently. So you now have the offer or the option to continue to offer virtual Athenian dialogues. Uh, great, great feedback. I see lots of thumbs up popping up all over the screen too, which is great. Um, I know quite a few of our, our states really enjoyed doing that throughout the pandemic, and hopefully those connections can continue to grow, not just statewide, but international as well. We've had quite a few Canadian clerks attending programs in Florida or in Virginia, various other locations, so it's a really great tool. Um, I will say that there are a new set of guidelines that we do need to take a look at with those. If you plan on offering virtual Athenian dialogues moving forward, please just make sure that you read through those guidelines. There are um, a little bit more empowering for the facilitators to be able to credit people or not credit people based on participation, based on camera connections. So make sure that you read those. There's also formatting information in there on how those can be offered. If you have questions regarding Athenian Dialogues, please reach out to me. Email is perfect and we can set up a time to talk over the phone if we need to. Um, also, please remember with Athenian Dialogues, they must be pre-approved before you advertise them. The IMC is still the owning organization of a dialogue, even if they're being used at your program, meaning institutes, conferences for the associations, they're still an IIMC program. So we still need to vet them and make sure that the registration form has everything that it needs content wise, that everything is approved before we advertise. So if you have questions about that, please reach out to me and we will get all of your questions answered and make sure that you are good to go to offer those programs virtually or in person now. Now we've also been looking at with the Education and Professional Development Committee over the last six months or so, a beyond the MMC program. So we've had a lot of requests over the last decade, if not longer, for what's next after the MMC. Lifelong learning, continuing education, bringing in individuals back to the academies, back to the institutes. So our executive committee did put together um, a proposal that our education committee looked at. It wasn't quite exactly what the education committee was looking for, so they're in the process of tweaking, reworking, and really fine tuning and honing what it is that they want to pass on to our institute directors, which will be the next step in the process. So the education committee over the next several months will be picking up the conversation again now that the conference is over. And we'll be looking at putting together a proposal to share with our IDs. During that share process, we will be looking for feedback, um, information, opinions, rip it up, break it back down, however we need to, to make sure that all parties that are gonna be involved in this continuing education endeavor are on board. So just as an FYI, nothing to really share yet, but know that that's coming down the road. If there's any questions about that too, you're always welcome to email them over to the education department or to Chris Shelby, and he'll be able to help answer those as well. Uh, the final thing that I will report on is that we will be starting the process this week um, on looking for a new director of professional development. This has been a long time coming and a conversation that's been in the works. So the job description is currently being fine tuned and approved and we will start advertising that as well. Hoping to have somebody in place by the end of summer. So stay tuned and we'll keep everyone in the loops of any interviews or hirings that are happening at headquarters. Any questions that we, we needed to address, anything else, feel free to use the chat box as we go through today. You are welcome to drop questions in there, comments. Um, we will download the chat. So if there's something in there that we don't get to during our time live, we will go through and do a wrap up and answer those questions when we send the links. So last time before we dive into the content, just make sure your name is correct to make sure your state or your location is listed on there. And then we'll go ahead and get started. Let me share my screen here with you, and I'll give you an idea of what we're going to be looking at today, what we're going to be talking about. All right. 
Oops, my chat box. Hang on one moment. There we go. Okay. So the colloquium has always been a meeting for the institute directors and the education chairs. We have a much larger audience today, um, much larger when we include the association presidents. So I just want to remind everyone, keep that in mind that this meeting is for you. IIMC staff is gonna help facilitate it, but please speak up. If there are questions that are not being answered, if there are topics that are not being addressed, please let us know so we can make sure that you are happy with the outcome of this meeting. Now, 2020 and 2021 has been one heck of a year, as we all know. Since we met 12 months ago, um, not only has a lot happened, but a lot has changed. I have watched firsthand every single one of you have to adapt to how you program, how you deliver your content, how you communicate with your membership, also how you create your institute. So it's been really in interesting and really fun for me to watch each one of you be innovative. So I'd like to keep us in that innovative spirit today, if that's okay. Um, innovation, this quote really stuck out, is no longer an option, it's a necessity. So as we start to think about the future, which is what our outcome is gonna be today, hopefully our goal that we'll reach, I want us to continue to think about the innovation. How do we continue to move forward while not forgetting where we've been and definitely not ignoring the challenges that we're currently facing? So as an organization, which is what's highlighted in this quote here, we have to think big picture. Organization is not just IIMC. Organization is the institute directors, association presidents, the ed chairs, staff, all of the different parties. So when we look big picture, we need to make sure that we're addressing all of these different groups and that our outcomes are serving all of these different groups. Definitely not an easy challenge, but I know with an innovative mindset, we can get to something today that will help us prepare for a direction in the future. So our theme today is going to be to create connection and conversations. So with that in mind, we have a couple of discussion points that we're really going to focus on today. We're going to look at where we have been since we last met 12 months ago. We're gonna look at challenges that we're currently facing. And then we're also gonna look at where do we wanna go from here? We may not have an answer to that last one before our time ends today, but that's definitely the direction that I want us thinking in and that we would love to see everybody start to think about. So with that, let's go ahead and dive into breakout rooms. During our conversation today, I'm going to be splitting you up into quite a few different type of breakout rooms. When you did your registration for the colloquium, you gave us some question answers, you gave us some feedback on what you're struggling with, what's happening in your area of the world, and what you think we all need to think about. So as we go through, we're going to take that information that you gave us and help break it up into breakout groups to have smaller conversations. But to introduce us and get us started for now, Karen is going to help, oops, excuse me, break us up into breakout rooms based on what hat you are currently wearing. So in this role here today, in this meeting, I want you to either identify as an institute director, association president, education chair, or an IIMC board member. If you aren't any of those and you're just visiting or you're just participating in the meeting, Pick one of those that you either want to be in or that you work closely with in your own organization, your own location. Karen is going to set us up in breakout rooms. When you get prompted on the screen, you're going to be able to choose which of those four rooms that you would like to go in. Now, when you get there, I just want you to make connections, maybe make a 30 second introduction to who you are, what role you play. And maybe give us an overview of what your biggest challenge or your biggest takeaway over the last 12 months has been. Um, this is just our chance to get to know each other a little bit. I know we're in um, a little bit of a bubble, if you will, by not having us all together. But because of the size of the group, let's just stick to these four roles. So Karen, if you can go ahead and launch those breakout rooms, you'll just accept the invitation for the room that you would like to join. Go ahead and click on that one, and then we will see you back in about 15, 20 minutes or so. If you need help, there is a help option that you can click on the screen or request assistance, I believe it says, and one of us will jump in there. But go ahead and make those introductions, and then we will see you back. Just enjoy the time, enjoy the conversation. OK, 
Karen, are we back? Meeting rooms are closed. Okay, welcome back everyone. So I hope you enjoyed your time in those. I know those were good conversations without even having been in there. Uh, it's, it's really fun for us to reflect and really important that we reflect on where we were successful. Everybody did struggle throughout the last 12 months in some way, shape or form. So I think it was really important for us to start off by sharing what we felt good about, where we had room to grow and both physically, mentally, whatever way you wanna spin that. I think it was really important to start off on a high note. So with that in mind, we would love to report back. When we sent you into those rooms, we wanted to know where you were successful as an individual or as an organization. And we wanted you to surround yourself with like-minded people who shared that same success. So I would love to go group by group and just have our spokesperson give us an update on if there were any common themes or any common experiences or anything that came out of your group that you feel would be of value to the big group overall. For those of you that didn't choose the room that is reporting back, pay attention to what they say. Even though it wasn't your strong point or where you were successful, there may be something that you hear from this group that may be able to give you a little bit of fuel to add to the fire later to increase that success in for yourself or your organization in that area. So we had a group number one, which was translating your curriculum online. Now in here, I have the A's where Amy Brewer or Anthony Mejia, did either of you agree to be spokesperson and are you willing to unmute yourself and share what your group discussed? I'm the volunteer and uh, so here's what we, uh, not saying this is as a group, but as uh, individual institute directors, we're giving some feedback. Uh, some of the successful tips were staying with the original curriculum and adapting it for uh, the online use, uh, allowing the trainers to be nimble and flexible on the delivery of the content, uh, breaking up the sessions over a longer uh, duration of time, um, and then having those individual sessions be shorter, um, two, two, three, four hours, uh, making having the learning assessments be consistent in, in how they were done um, in person, um, and also specific to the course that was being taught. Um, uh, being careful, uh, giving some careful consideration to what kind of courses should be offered online versus which ones really are intended to be in person. And then um, having intentional use of uh, the tools uh, to allow for engagement amongst the members or the participants. And that's what I got. Anthony. Yeah, all really, really good tools. Um, the consistency part is what sticks out to me in there. You want to give your attendees the experience that they're traditionally used to just in a different format. So how do we stay consistent? How do we bring what they're used to, what they're comfortable with to the table in a new online platform? Was there anybody else in that group that had anything else that they wanted to add? I think Anthony did a great job, but if there was anything that was missed, please unmute and we'll be happy to hear from you. Okay, well, what I found really interesting in the breakout room selections is that hardly anybody chose group number two, which was generating revenue. So I want to take a pause right there, just a little time out and say nobody got really good at generating revenue. So red flag for all of us. Nobody got good at that. We may have gotten good at translating the content online, but did we get good at generating revenue? I know we had Jeff Hendry, our Region 3 Institute Director in Florida, popped in there and spent a lot of time alone. And I think as soon as we brought him out, Diane Flugfelder, our Region 2 Director, tried to pop in there and spent some time alone and popped back out. So really interesting, before we move on to number three, that there is a space where every single one of us, and an, as an organization as a whole, and as individual organizations, where we have room to grow, was how do we get really good at generating revenue for our organizations when we're put into those forceful situations? Kathy Novak, I see your hand is up. Did you want to add anything? Yeah, just that, you know, we made more money last year than we ever have before. And it was, I believe, because um, we offered, we, our costs were very low, right? Because Zoom has a very low barrier of entry. And um, I did a lot of the work. We more than covered our expenses. And it, we offered a lot of classes at a low rate. So, you know, our margin 
I mean, we, we made a ton of money. And for us, it was a realization that there's a lot of unmet demand out there by doing things virtually and offering online um, opportunities for learning. And that's why we will never go back to completely in person. So I just want to push back. I think there's a lot of opportunity to make a lot of money. And thank you, I'm going to echo Kathy's sentiment on that. Um, we also saved a lot of money by not holding it at like a hotel or a conference center. I mean, that cost alone took us down, you know, and, and we also made the most that we have because of holding it virtually. I mean, even with keeping it at the cost that we had had it at and nobody really argued us on that. Um, but we also decided to come back and offer um, like a $50 credit for this year because people went in last year knowing that they had already sort of registered for an in-person um, institute and academy. So we're offering a credit this year and also do like raffling off a free, um, a free institute um, or academy next year um, attendance. So, I mean, we're trying to give it back to attendees um, to some extent, but definitely knowing that the virtual option does make it so that we don't have as much expense. Thank you, Sarah. I have a uh, Camilla Pittman's hand up. I have a couple of you. So Camilla, go ahead. Thank you, Ashley. Uh, I want to make one comment here um, that some of you may agree with or not agree with. Some of you I've had this conversation with, but I know, um, and I don't think Marianne's hand is raised, but in our group, she raised the question of consistent, some cons consistency in the cost or the fees or the charges for registration. I know I have in Region 3 a little bit of a Duke's mixture there where we have one state that is able to charge a whole lot more than any other state that I'm aware of. Um, and I wish we could work with them in getting that, that cost lowered somewhat. But then I, being an employer as well, I was all for the cheaper we can pay for education fantastic, but I don't want us to use the value of that, lose the value of that education. And in some cases, I felt like we're paying a very minimal amount instead of a balanced amount, say for an Athenian dialogue. Uh, it's not that we're out to make money for it, but there is value in working towards three points of certification. So I don't want to cheapen or lessen um, because of the cost, what that experience is and what the value of that point, that point, points of, points that, of education that education is. is. So I, I hope that makes sense. Um, but I, I want to be fair to our members. I want to be able to offer them more, but I don't want to cheapen or lessen it because of, a, of, of the lower, the more we do is lower the price for some of those. And, and so that's two comments and then question in the same statement, but balancing some of those costs might be something to look at as well. Thank you, Camilla. Uh, Pamela Miller. Thank you. I, I agree 100% with uh, Camilla's comments. They were very similar to what I was going to uh, comment about. It is not just about the money. It is not just about the points. And we've talked about this for years. Um, it's about the quality of the learning. It's about the quality of the experience. Uh, and I too have some concerns around the, the differential pricing. When we first started this a year ago, um, it, it seemed that these uh, individual virtual courses that were being offered were being offered uh, even by IIMC, it looked like at $25, um, I think it was an hour, an average. And now it appears to have uh, more than either doubled or, or increased more than, than double. Um, so yes, this is an opportunity maybe to increase revenue, but um, it has to be balanced because you're getting more people and your overhead is lower, but it has to be balanced with the quality of the experience. Um, and I don't, I think it's a very, very dangerous mindset to sacrifice one for the other. Thank you, Pamela. Um, Diane Flugfelder. 
I found the cabin fever series positive and negative. And Camilla knows what I'm speaking about. And as I see the people that are participating, Tate, a lot of you, Kim is one of them from Peachtree, participated in the cabin fever um, co co program. I collected over $9,000 in less than three months. And all of that money, I paid my facilitators and that money is all going to scholarships for IMC purposes. I didn't care about the money. That's not why I did it. I wanted to help educate people. But the problem that I came across that really gets the crawl in my goat is that people don't get engaged. They turn on in the morning, they say, hello, I'm so-and-so, and then you don't hear their voice until it's time to say goodbye at the end of the day. That's the part that bothers me. I was grateful to be able to reach out to Canada, South Dakota, even some of our Alaskan friends. I was so happy that they could participate and they had the opportunity to do something because they don't have it geographically. But it was the ones that's right down the road that were too busy doing everything else and not paying attention that just pissed me off. So I'm glad that we came up with more stringent rules for the next proceeding, Athenians, because it really needs to be enforced. But also, I've been asked to repeat the series next year, and I will, because I'm not there for any personal gain. This is to help those people that don't have the opportunity in their backyard. So, and that's what it's all about, is working together to help one another. So thank you, Karen Lee, because I couldn't have done it without you. Thank you, Diane. Jeff Hendry. Yeah, so I'll just, um, just to echo just a few comments. Uh, the one thing I wanna stress to everybody, at least from my perspective, is the great thing about having whatever 48, um, you know, institutes and then the worldwide is we all have our own little laboratories and the things that work best in, uh, you know, Arkansas, Alabama, uh, California may not work in Florida. And so what's working for our clerks uh, is, is both virtual and, and, um, and in person. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, I, I've come to X amount of uh, institute director meetings and a common theme. And that's why I went into the generating revenue because it's always a constant challenge for everybody. And uh, I think you can have everything from high quality to sustainable revenue. And at the end of the day, um, one of the one of the things that, that we've employed, and frankly, the Florida Association of City Clerks is, you know, we record all our webinars, we record all our programs. And so clerks that can't be there in real time, real live, are able to go back and watch that through, you know, the recordings. And at the end of the day, um, the only thing, well, not the only thing, but one of the things they miss is the ability to ask their real time questions, but they do still get to hear the interactions that happen that, that given day. So um, I think, um, you know, the virtual is going to be absolutely a part of what we do in the future, <clears throat> but also um, our, our clerks do embrace the person to person. So um, I don't think the, only, the last thing I would close with, um, whether you're doing it strictly for the money is something you got to live with. I mean, we, if we're doing it for the high quality training of our clerks, which we're committed to, I don't think you ought to be um, embarrassed about generating revenue because there are going to be a lot of times where you wish you had um, sustainable revenue that you don't. So uh, I think the more resources we can bring in, the previous speaker mentioned the fact about putting that back into scholarships. I think that's tremendous if you're uh, generating revenue to be able to pump it into those kinds of resources and target it in that way. So uh, that's my 30 cents worth. Thanks, Jeff. I have uh, Sue Haig and then Anthony Mejia, and then we will move on to our next group. Go ahead, Sue. Just on a different vein of income, our conference that we have in New York on a town clerk level, um, we generate a lot of our income through vendors and sponsorships. And this year, we really had to be extremely creative to be able to engage enough sponsorship to keep we, we make like 25,000 a year at, at least, give or take. And this year we were actually able to make 30,000, um, but that was strictly through being extremely creative and innovative 
in how the vendors interacted virtually with us in our conference. So there, there's other ways I think to do it outside of some registration fees. Um, but again, you have to be innovative and creative to be able to track that kind of income. Thank you, Sue. Anthony, you wanna wrap us up? Yeah, so uh, obviously I don't know all the rules about Institute, uh, but for the CCAC conference here in California, we were able to generate $30,000 through sponsorships uh, through our vendors, and that was four. Um, and, and through those four vendors, they were given an opportunity to provide a 30 second video that was displayed before the session even began. Um, and then with some logo placements on the website and a few other little uh, shout outs, that's $30,000 in the pocket of CCAC to give out in scholarships and other programs. Um, you know, the, the comment about money and points can't be everything. It's not everything unless you're the person who needs it or you don't have the money to spend uh, for the institutes. Um, and so, you know, if the institutes um, are allowed to have sponsors, I don't know what's holding you back. Um, they, they generate good money. They don't even have to be present at your sessions. They're happy to record and just have it played. And they will drop a lot of money, not for every, I'm not saying in every uh, situation, but we have vendors in California, at least, who will drop a lot of money to have 30 seconds in front of uh, your participants. Thank you, Anthony. All great points. Anything else before we move on to group number three, which was sharing of technical knowledge with others? Anything else? You're always welcome to drop things in the chat box, too, if you think of something after we've moved on. Let's go ahead and grow to group number three then. Um, in there, I have Deborah Buff or Kitty Kapitke toward the top of the alphabet there. Did either of you opt to be spokesperson? I'll, I'll be glad to do it, not a Hi, problem. Deborah. Thank you go very ahead. much. What we found interesting was there is, there was such a learning process in going to this virtual, to these Zoom meetings. To, I mean, I didn't even know what Zoom meant. Um, had no idea about it. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm from old school. So <laughs> it was definitely a learning experience. And then we just shared what we learned with others that helped them to grow to be better professionals in our profession. Um, I do want to give, um, and I hope she doesn't get mad at me. I would like for IIMC to contact Winnie Beloi, you there? My, I know I'm killing your name. I see Winnie's you, here. Winnie. She's here. Ch chime in so they can know who you are. Beloi. Yes, thank you, dear. Lovely lady, but it's having a lot of resistance with her um, local clerks in participating in education. So if the IIMC will please reach out to her to see what they can do to help increase the training and the opportunities and how to win those members over to participate. Thank you, that's all I have. Thank you, Deborah. Anybody else from group number three wanna talk about knowledge sharing or transferring of those skills before we move on to group number four? And Winnie, we will definitely be in touch. Yeah, Lana or Lana? Um, yeah, I was just going to add that um, I shared in our group as well that um, we conducted our annual conference uh, virtually this year. And um, we did it over four different days and just to allow people to, you know, continue doing their work day somewhat. But we also offered a two for one, like you were allowed to invite one guest. And um, they were guests that weren't members of our um, organization. So it went over really, really well. And it kind of gave a little taste test of what we can offer. And I think it'll really help increase our membership for, for next year. So I just wanted to share that too. I love that idea. I think uh, finding a way to get non-members or those that aren't engaged, engaged in the conversation and the learning is an excellent, excellent idea. Anybody else from group number two before we, or excuse me, group number three, before we move on? Okay, 
So I have group number four, which was the overall embracement of online education. And this was a really popular room. We had 18 of you in there. So in there, I had Celine Hurtado or Chip Taylor towards the top. Did either of you opt to be our spokesperson? And will you please unmute and share? Um, this is Celine. I think I got voluntold. <laughs> I think. So um, our common theme um, in speaking with the group was that the virtual education or the online learning provided um, additional equitable learning opportunities to a vast number of clerks that were, net, were not usually able to attend in person, either based on budget or also a lot based on being one person offices and aren't able to travel, which is, I know something that we faced in Kansas, even before the pandemic, we were trying to figure out how to reach those clerks that were not able to meet or meet in person because they couldn't leave their office. Um, so that was a common thing. We also said that in increased participation based on those same reasons, because of budget and time, our online opportunities, we had a lot of associations or a lot of states that had more attendance for online meetings. Um, and that we also think that the new normal will be both will be a hopefully good mix of both virtual and in-person meetings. I think that was our key point. So thank you, Celan. Anybody else in that group want to chime in or add? Okay. Let's go ahead and then go on to group number five, which was uh, thinking outside of the box to either create or seek out new opportunities. So this could have been a really good mix of educators and clerks seeking the education. So in that group, I had uh, Amy Holt, Angie Marshall, or Cassie Cooper towards the top. Who was our spokesperson? Please unmute. Uh, it's me. Hey, Angie. Angie, sorry. Okay. So the, hang on, let me turn my heater off. It's cold in my office too, Lisa. Um, so the thing that kept coming up was the, some people were doing in-person, virtual, and hybrid. And there was a lot of talk on the hybrid option. Um, of course, there, that comes along with technical issues. But one state actually hired somebody to um, help administer that and monitor. Um, of course, the benefit of going with the virtual or hybrid is it's more affordable for attendees and less expensive to put on. But then that brought up other concerns um, for people who have like signed contracts with hotels for years, you know, in advance where you have food and beverage minimums and, you know, attrition levels. Um, so uh, we had an attorney in our group that said that we could speak and, and get those amendments made, possibly. Um, there was also some talk of offering um, incentives for the in-person so that maybe just do the virtual for one day versus a three-day in-person conference. Um, I've got a whole page of notes and scribbles and I'm trying to make sense of it. Um, there were some apps that were suggested to to help monitor um, accountability for sessions, um, and I can give those if, or I can type them in might be better into the chat room. Um, and they also talked on somebody mentioned it earlier too to record sessions to be either available and you can make it free or you can make it for purchase for people who weren't able to attend the real time, either in person or virtually. And another thing that was mentioned to just people that have access to universities, reach out to the resource lab there for help with the technical parts. Anything else, Angie? No, I'll let somebody else speak if I miss something. Okay. And if you will drop those apps that you mentioned into the chat box, I'm sure that piqued a couple of individuals' interests on accountability. Was there anybody else from Angie's group, group number five, that wanted to share or add in? Okay, group number six, we talked about cultivating a collaborative mindset. At the top of that list, I had Amy Niemer or Angela Richburg. Did either of you opt to be spokesperson? Oh, well, I thought I was nominated. Where 
It was Amy. <laughs> Hi, Angela. Hi. Uh, no. Um, we had a good conversation. Uh, we The main thing was emphasized is that clerks are very good at collaborating with one another to get the job done. Um, one of the institute directors brought that out is that um, everyone really got together to get things done as far as um, continuing to strive to have education for the clerks. And we had several people that went the route of having more Athenian dialogues of which people within their state participated, but many of them had outsiders participate, whether it was individuals from other states or countries, but also other organizations actually um, started participating in the education that um, our state organizations held. Um, if I'm not mistaken, like Nebraska said, they had several other organizations that actually tagged on with them so they could still earn their continuing education credits and how they used that. And that I'm sure helped with the income of the state, I'm, you know, state organization. But um, they also discussed, um, we had a discussion of the pros and cons of people participating from other state organizations because, you know, many of our education, I mean, our, uh, much of our education is state specific when you're getting your state certification. But we did talk about, you know, how they collaborated and how we could collaborate in the future of being able to bring on other states to be able to participate within our own education seminars or you know what the pros and cons were of trying to do that. But all in all, it sounded like our organizations, really the clerks bound together and collaborated really well in continuing education um, throughout the whole pandemic. Thank you, Angela. Anybody else from group six want to add anything in? Okay. Well, we are about halfway through our time together and for the sake of stretching our legs and taking a break, um, let's take about a five minute break if that's, if that's okay with everybody. Just stretch, refill the coffee, whatever you need to do. And we will see you back. I have 1030 my time here, California. So we'll see you at 35 after whatever hour you are working on. If you would like to drop the, there's quite a few questions and comments in the chat box regarding technical resources. If you wanna go ahead and drop whatever you are currently using or your institute is currently using, we can try to compile a list of resources that we can share with the entire group. So maybe as you get up and stretch the legs, start thinking about that and then fill that chat box before we get going. But enjoy your break. We'll see you back in five. Thank you. <laughs> All right, everyone, welcome back. Hope you enjoyed your break. Now that we've talked about where we've been over the last 12 months, uh, I wanna talk about, and hopefully you all are interested in talking about where we currently are now. We can't look to the future unless we pay attention to where we've been and where we currently are. So as I share my screen here, let me get this up. We're gonna invite you to go into another group of breakout rooms. These will be self-selected again, but we have six of these, or excuse me, five of these this round that I would like you to choose from. Now I want you to think in that hat that you currently put on at the beginning of this, either in that role as ID, association president, ed chair, board of directors, wherever you were, try to wear that hat when you go into this next set of breakout rooms. So room number one is going to be on your current challenge, which you resonate with the most of financial stability or budget restrictions. Now that can be through your role as the provider, as an institute director, institute collaborator, or it can be through your role as a clerk, such as an ed chair, or thinking about the clerk in your municipalities where budgets have been restricted. So think about your biggest burning problem right now, your biggest hurdle or issue that resonates with you the, with you the most. Room number two is going to be from the educational provider perspective only. So balancing in-person versus online educational offerings. 
how you're managing this or how you're not managing this. Let's think about both of those. Room number three is gonna be as an attendee perspective or provider perspective. How do you manage expectations for online opportunities? Now this can be participants want more online opportunities and you as an educational provider don't want to do them. Or from the attendee perspective, you want your institute to offer more education online or not offer education online. So think both perspectives there. Room number four is going to be member or attendee retention. This can apply to associations. How are you retaining your members, either budget cuts or whatever reasons they're just dropping their memberships or attendee perspective as well. How are you maintaining your attendees at your events, conferences, institutes? So think from the association perspective or educational provider perspective. And room number five is going to be the open borders. While we have all this technology, it is a lot easier to access education, like we heard a few moments ago in our last wrap-up, about the ease of access without uh, having to stick to your particular locale. So pick a room as an educational provider, number five may be a really interesting conversation for our institute directors. So pick a room that resonates with you. We will again attempt to do the split when you are prompted, select the room you would like to go to. If it doesn't pop up, just drop your room number in the chat box or hang out and shout out your room number and we will get you taken care of. Feel the need to thank that voice every time. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Hopefully that was good conversation and topics that generated a lot of ideas, um, maybe even differing viewpoints, which is exactly what, what we want and what we need. So what I would like to do, um, instead of doing a full report back with all of the details that came out of your session, I'm going to share my screen and ask one important question for each of those groups. So identify your spokesperson. If you hadn't done so already, I can help throw that out. But we would like to know, based on those topics that you went into and had that conversation regarding, is there a burning boat problem? So with those topics, is there one thing that really stands out that is a issue, is something that needs to be addressed right away, that is just a sticking point that is not going away, that we need to fix, work out, um, bring back to normal, whatever that means. We want to know, is there a burning boat problem? That boat is going down. We are all in that boat. How do we fix it? So take a peek at that question. And then spokesperson, um, let's go ahead and hear from group number one, which was the financial stability group. Um, do we have that spokesperson available or do we need to call out that name? I'm unsure who the spokesperson was supposed to be, but it seemed like I talked the most. <laughs> well, go ahead, Angela. Tell us what you talked about. Um, when I guess our burning boat problem was just um, not knowing what the future holds financially in order to prepare and keep focused on training budgets. Because, you know, even though some of us are doing okay during this time, others are not. The money is just gone. But even those of us doing okay right now, it's almost like, our future projections are just out the window because we don't know what a year from now is going to look like because everything seems to be changing so much day to day. Um, you know, cost and everything else is just on the rise at the moment. And it's just, we don't know what a year from now looks like. And we're not as sure as we used to be. And encouraging, you know, those training funds to remain there is hard when they're seeing other things that they need to focus their money on. I completely agree. The unknown is something that I've had quite a few conversations with, with many of you. And a lot of that is reflected in your registration questionnaires that you filled out for us is that we just don't know. Thank you, Angela. 
If there's anybody else in group number one that had additional comments, go ahead and drop those in the chat box just for the sake of time today. We'll move on to group number two, which talked about finding a balance between in-person and online educational offerings. And this was from the online provider option, not so much the attendee uh, perspective. So who in group number two wanted to volunteer to be spokesperson? Hey, Ashley, that was me, Claire. Hey, Claire. So probably the biggest um, takeaway is kind of if, if people are divided, and I know it's not just a clean line, but if people are divided into one group that always will want traditional in-person gatherings for education and one group that will always want online providings for education, how to make each group see the benefits of the other side, sort of. Um, so, I mean, the general feeling is that there will always be some form of online training in the future and in, um, in some sense, but how to keep everybody happy with the educational offerings, um, even if it's a format they're not comfortable with. Thank you, Claire. I think we're all in that same boat in terms of how do we find that balance? Is there really such a thing as balance? There's always going to be a group, always going to be a set of individuals that aren't comfortable, aren't happy, aren't on board with whatever it is that you offer. So is there a way to find a solution to that problem? And what does that look like? Kind of put a pin in that thought and we'll come back to that one. If uh, there's no other comments for group number two, you're welcome to drop those in the chat box. But group number three, we talked about managing expectations for online opportunities. And this could have been as a provider or as an attendee. So I'd love to hear from group number three on what their burning boat problem was or that one main takeaway. And in group number three, I had Deborah Buff, Jeff Fogg, Kim Churik. Yes. Hi. Ashley, I, I was uh, nominated um, to give some short feedback for our group. We looked at it from the expectations of the education provider um, and we discussed the challenge of over being of the level of engagement of attendees. Um, if you're running an educational event, how can you be assured that you've had appropriate engagement from attendees? Um, and we found that a challenge. One suggestion that's been taken uh, by one of those in our group was that the educational event wasn't credited because of the difficulty of being satisfied that there was a full level of engagement, but that was recognized as being um, not a long-term solution because if we're gonna continue in the longer term with Zoom meetings or virtual meetings, attendees will start demanding credits. So it's a fix for the short term, but it's not a full-time solution. We discussed the uh, option of checking for 20 minutes. And if you've been in there for 20 minutes, you were treated as, as having attended the full day because it was too, in, too onerous to keep checking throughout and just taking on trust. But the, the issues around um, integrity and property of attendees was what we concentrated our discussion on. Very well said, Jeff, thank you. Any other comments in group number three, go ahead and drop those in the chat box. Let's hear from group number four, um, member or attendee retention, either from the association perspective or educational provider perspective. Who is our spokesperson for group number four? That would be me, Colleen. Colleen, go ahead. It, mostly what in our group were, seemed like association presidents or just members, but our, our, I'd say our big um, takeaway is how we keep our experienced members engaged, those who have already uh, achieved their MMC, uh, because we need them there. They're a great example and they're great mentors for our newer clerks. Um, Ohio has a really cool program, they call it MMCs on the Move. We do something similar where we make a fun class or a fun outing for these uh, folks who don't need to set, set through a basic records training. So they can do something like go on a tour or go to some famous place or whatever, just to keep them there 
registering for the conferences, being engaged. Uh, we are a huge supporter of that Beyond the MMC program that is in the works and are really looking forward to that. Anything else, Colleen? No, because you said just one. So well, if you have if you have another one that we need to know about, I'm so. Open no, we to just that. talked about a lot of it is just uh, making it a lot more fun and doable, involving your vendors. Um, you know, they love to do uh, raffles and prizes, and um, you know, just ways to keep them engaged with the vendors, like making a passport or a bingo card, so they all have to go visit everyone and things like that. We talked about having uh, one uh, state has a membership <coughs> and because, because of the turnover and uh, just reaching out in person, not necessarily an email, picking up the phone and calling members who haven't been active. Great suggestions. And last but certainly not least, group number six, talking about the open borders or the ease of access to education in the current time that we live in. Who is our spokesperson for group number six? If we didn't name, or excuse me, group number it's five, excuse me, not six, five. Yeah, doing five or six? Five, that's all you. Okay. We failed to appoint a spokesperson, so I will uh, jump in. We, um, we had, a, it was a great conversation and many of us felt that the uh, genie's out of the bottle and um, we, and forgive me group, I'm going to slaughter this and you can jump in, that we're going to just have to adapt. Um, most of us did not see that it was a big problem except for the state specific information. And I think there is a good deal of frustration that we would see members, our members come through or get the note from you saying, congratulations, so-and-so is an MMC, never attended anything, have no baseline knowledge of the state requirements necessary to do their job well. So, um, it's kind of a, you know, it's a, it's a double-edged sword that there's great opportunity, um, that it may not be as big a problem as we think in general, but the lack of state-specific information for our clerks, we see as potentially very problematic. And please group, um, jump in and correct me. Thank you, Kathy. Yeah, if there was anything else from group number six, I know this was a big topic and it was one of the recurring themes that we saw throughout the registration data. Um, and even prior to the actual registration questions going out, um, we got a couple of emails regarding this. So if there's other things that we want to talk about in this one or other bigger problems, please chime in or drop them in the chat box. Um, Amy Niemer, is that your hand up? Yeah, go yes. ahead. Um, I'll just add that, you know, uh, Kathy did a great job of, uh, talking about our conversations, um, it, there seems to be a lot of concerns from the institutes on the open border concept. And I, coming from a state that has our own certification program, I, I don't understand all of those um, issues, but I, I hear that there are some and I, um, you know, like I said, I just don't understand all of them to speak to them. Um, but I would be interested in, in the perspective from our members on how they feel about the open border concept. And, um, you know, if it is something that our members desire, if there's enough of them that feel like we need to, to have this conversation, then how do we get there? How do we remove those roadblocks and um, the concerns that, that the institutes are having? Yeah, great question. Um, and that's a, a great segue into where we're going next. So now that we've kind of looked at where we've been, we've talked about where we currently are, what we're up against, what those challenges are that we are facing, where are we going? Are there actual solutions to these burning boat problems? So let me take a, a screen share here. And what I would love for you to do as an individual, think about really looking to the future, um, taking that hat and really shifting it to future visioning, looking down the road, 
where are we going as an organization? Um, the genie is out of the bottle is a great way to really put a bow on what's happening with online learning, what's happening with the ease of education access, open borders, more collaboration. So while all of this is very, very positive, some perspectives will also tell you that it's very negative and that there are issues that we need to at least regulate or guidelines we need to put in place. So as an individual human person, go ahead and look at these questions. Are there solutions to the burning boat problems that we heard today? Or are there burning boat problems at all that we need to address? Where do we want to see the organization IINC going as a whole, which obviously breaks down into the institutes and the associations? So what I would love for us to do now is while keeping these questions in mind, I think it would be wonderful if we created our own chat rooms, our own breakout groups. So what I would like to do is have everybody kind of drop into the chat box what topic you still feel really called to discuss. It can be any of those that we've already talked about today, or it can be something completely different that wasn't even brought up that's still just stuck in your mind. We can talk about the ease of access, budgets. Our goal in these conversations is going to be to come up with, are there solutions? Do we want to make recommendations here as a group? Are there things that we really need to get to work on in order to make all of the associations, all of the organizations better as a whole and as individuals? So take a peek at this. I'm going to stop sharing and take a look in the chat box but I would love for you to drop your one or two topics of choice. Karen and I are gonna go through and sort and see what kind of themes that we can find and create us some chat rooms for the last few moments of our time together that you can go in and see if you can work out solutions or come up with at least a direction that we need to take moving into the future. So I have accreditation programs for clerk's offices. best practices, beyond the MMC, okay. Balance between integrity and points, okay. Karen, let's make a beyond the MMC room. Anybody else? Throw some things out there, everyone. Membership recruitment. Yeah, we can do member attendee, member and attendee retention. Karen, do that one. And then let's take a room on balance, balancing um, both integrity, points offered. Um, certifications going out state specific versus not state specific or country specific content. Let's find one of those. Balance, okay, standardized hybrid training model for all levels. Balancing, okay. So let's do two, let's do two conversations on balance, Karen. Let's do one balancing online learning with in-person learning. And then let's do one balancing the integrity versus um, the speed, the number of points. So let's take balance rooms, everyone. And if there's a better way to word this, please chime in and help me out here. But I, I'm seeing two different balance versions, balance between how much online is offered versus in person, and then balancing the integrity of the programs based on the speed, the hours, the points, the content themselves. So not the delivery method. Pricing, okay. So we have four rooms so far, anything else? Speak now or forever hold your peace. I wanna make sure your voice is heard everyone. So if there's something out there that we haven't talked about yet or something that's really bothering you, throw it out there.
And I do have Pamela suggesting in the chat box that the balances are all really connected. So maybe we will leave them as one. Are we okay with leaving them as one and just honing balance all together with every interpretation of that word? I agree. Okay, let's do that then. So we'll go a balance room, a beyond the MMC room, and then a recruitment or member retention room. And I also have the suggestion that the spokesperson will be the person with the letter closest to the end of the alphabet this time. Our A's and B's and C's are tired of reporting back. So I have three rooms. I had a best practices suggestion. Lee, you wanna go with the best practices? Anybody wanna join in on one of those rooms possibly? Give me a nod, a thumbs up, some kind of feedback, yeah? Okay, so let's go with the best practices. That'll give us four rooms. Let's take about 20 minutes. And then we will close our last few moments together as a group. And I will go ahead and get those going. Karen has those launched for you. So go ahead and choose yours and we will see you back in about 20 minutes or so. And again, we're looking for solutions or direction. So think very future focused. Ashley, would you put me in the beyond the MMC? Yes, ma'am. Me you. too, please. Sharon Kassler. Sharon Kassler and Sherry Pierce. Beyond the MMC. You got it, ladies. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, Joan. Am I doing the best practices, Ashley? Winnie, yes. I'll send you into best practices. All right, Fox, can I go to best practices, please? Yes, Valerie, I will send you over there now. Uh, Maureen Kane, best practice say, oh, balance, excuse me, Maureen, balance, okay. Um, I have Carrie Parker, Beyond the MMC, Deborah Buff, she's gone, Joan Tilton, okay. If anybody I've missed, just unmute, let me know. Actually, I don't remember all the ones that are the choices, and I don't see that on my screen. I do okay. not see on the Hannah, we have beyond the MMC, mm -hmm. we have a member and attendee retention, balance in all the different senses, as well as a best practices room. I'll do the retention, please. Retention? You. Okay, you got it. So could I be placed with the best practices group, please? Yes, sir. I will send you Thank over. you. You're welcome. Ashley, it's Kitty. I'll take balance. You got it, Kitty. I feel like you're on Jeopardy or something, the way that you say it. <laughs> I love that. Here you go. Irma, Parker, balance. Okay, Irma, you got it. Um, who am I missing? Trisha Hogan, she's gone. Lisa Garcia, Sarah Sean Rock, or Deborah Muller? Ashley, if you could put me in balance. Got it, Deborah. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Then I have uh, Lisa, Sarah, and Angie Marshall. Welcome back. Karen, are all of our rooms back? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Well, we have about eight minutes left together. And what I thought would be the best way to wrap this up is to do a similar wrap up or report back from the groups. Again, with that future visioning, I know I popped in and out a couple of the, the conversations and there is no easy answers to any of the conversations that we had. There's no, let's pull the trigger and it's, it's done, we're moving forward. A lot of these are very much conversations that we need to weigh the pros, we need to weigh the cons. We really need to make sure that there's accurate information out there before we make decisions. So what I'd like to do is just go room by room real quick. Whoever wants to be the spokesperson closest to the letter Z, as we said, go ahead and pop in and just give us the highlight or give us that solution to the burning boat problem if there is, or let us know what we need to think about as we move forward. So group number one, go ahead. I believe it was beyond the MMC, Karen. 
Okay, that's me, Ashley. Um, we had great discussion, um, and a lot of folks have been talking about this for many years, but basically we all agreed that it is time for us to really try and do all we can to get this program up and running. We are losing interest from some of our members that aren't able to get the support to attend um, academies, institutes, conferences, because one, their communities feel like they've already gotten their MMC, they've got all the education that they have, there's no need to let them go beyond that. So um, we just feel like we're missing opportunities for our members to remain engaged and we want to provide, you know, still great educational opportunities, which we know has to be worked out. Those details have to be worked out. But one of the things we talked a lot about was critical thinking. Cassie was in our group, Cassie Van Remorta, one of the Institute directors or the Institute from Wisconsin. And she had great uh, suggestions on ways that we need to be kind of thinking outside the box and focus a lot on critical thinking. Um, we just want to see this program come to fruition so that we can retain our members, keep them engaged and keep them learning and sticking to that commitment that we are going to commit to lifelong learning. I hope I got it all, Sherry. She said she didn't want to do it because you hear her talk all the time, but um, we're just very much ready for this program to, to be launched. And I think of all the breakout rooms that we had, that is the one room where we have a solution pending. It's not ready yet, but that is one where we can definitely push a button, flip a switch, and it will happen at some point. Um, just as an update for everyone, the, you, the Netherlands has a phenomenal level program. Their institute is structured into levels. Um, as well as the United Kingdom, SLCC. They also have levels that they work off of. So where the committee is at with that one is they are gonna be connecting with representatives from SLCC, which is the United Kingdom Association represented here today as well. And they're gonna be meeting to discuss how that program is structured and may IIMC want to mimic that or borrow some of that content, borrow some of the structure. It's very successful out that way. So we are looking at that and we will report back with what the findings are once the committee has had a chance to really digest or what it is that they would like to propose to the Institute directors. So thank you, Sharon. Um, group B or group number two was member and attendee retention. Who was our spokesperson for that one? And do we wanna give a quick report back? Sure, I am the volunteer for Group B. So we um, just kind of discussed it from two angles. One was, how do you get in touch with people who aren't um, currently aware or part of your organization? And how do you keep people engaged in your organization and continuing their membership? So for the first part, we talked about um, Diane had had a great suggestion that had been done in New Jersey, which is, you know, more personal contact to all of the clerks in her um, state where they sent out postcards. Just, <coughs> excuse me. Okay, so I'll help Brene out. You there? Okay. And yeah, we sent the postcards to each municipality, not by a clerk's name, but to each municipality. So they had something tangible on their hand that said, join MCA and J. The other thought we had was a Thelma and Louise on the road show where the um, state representatives would go around and introduce themselves to the region members. And they would give the, um, well, let me see, where was it? Explain the value of the membership. Um, Give, the, give them a prep rally, a pep rally, just promote what the region and the state membership was all about, the IMC membership. The whole thing was we all grew up, no one had the dream of being a municipal clerk. So nobody really even knew that we all existed. So what about if we did something at career days and pr promoted municipal government? Um, Delaware has a mentor program that could that mentor program where you take a new clerk under your wing and break them in, could some of that time spent as a mentor be applied to the Beyond MMMC program as credits? So there were different brainstormings on things to do to get people involved and get their interest in the membership. Thank you, Diane, and thank you, Renee. Uh, group C or group number three, Balance, who wanted to be our spokesperson? 
Well, it was my suggestion and we didn't select a spokesperson, so I'll just speak up. Um, we don't have a solution. <laughs> We, um, we did have a very good conversation. Thank you, Ashley, for uh, joining us and being a part of that conversation. It's really a philosophical conversation uh, that we had. Um, there were some uh, suggestions. Uh, I understand uh, Chris, and Chris, you speak up too because I don't wanna speak for you, um, that it might be a, something for the education committee and the board to be discussing in terms of uh, balance. And uh, in terms of the education committee, Ashley did share with us that that committee is looking, uh, before COVID hit, they were looking at and reviewing the uh, help me, Ashley, is it that both the education guidelines and the institute guidelines? Correct. Streamlining yeah. them into one big document. Yeah, thanks. And um, there was a suggestion made that uh, perhaps uh, some institute directors be uh, allowed to be back as participants on that committee. And um, that's it. Uh, I, I invite everybody, anybody else who is in that room to share their takeaway. Thank you, Pamela. And last but not least, group number four, we talked about best practices. If anybody would like to unmute as a spokesperson, you're welcome sure. to um, So we really found that there were two understandings of best practices, both best practices in content and delivery. And so we shared a little bit about that, recognizing how important it is for sessions like this to learn from each other in terms of best practices in both. Um, we talked a couple, a little bit about specific challenges in terms of uh, relevant case studies for clerks and in local government, challenges due to different audiences, um, cities, towns, statutory, home rule, appointed, elected, all have uh, little variations that make it a little more challenging. And um, both, I think virtually, primarily virtually, but in person as well, uh, what are the best practices for both making connections and making sure that the logistics run well? And I think I, let me know if I missed anything, group. Thank you, Kathy. Well, on behalf of IIMC, I really appreciate, we really appreciate the good conversations today. I know there is different viewpoints on certain topics, certain things that one individual may be more passionate about than another individual, but overall, we are all in our different organizations working towards the same goal, educating the clerks in an integral, integ I don't know what the word is, way, but also in a way that makes sense financially, practically, uh, any different way that you can spin it, we all have the same goal. So I appreciate everyone taking the three hours out of your day today. I know there were other meetings. I also know that there's a lot of different resources in that chat box. We will go ahead, Karen and myself, will download the chat box, put together the recording of this. Unfortunately, like we said in the beginning, the recording does not capture what happens in the breakout rooms. So if you have notes from your conversations in those breakouts that you would like to share, we can put those together in some kind of report and send out. As always, if you need anything, whether it's on the association level, ed chair level, ID level, board, whatever you need, please reach out to IRMC staff. We are happy to help. If there is anything else for the good of the order, I invite you to go ahead and unmute or raise your hand. I know Valerie Fox has her hand raised. Go ahead, Valerie. I'm sorry, it wasn't meant to be raised, but thank you. I think this was really, really helpful. And it was, it was okay. really enjoyable. So thank you. And I'm sorry, I didn't mean to raise my hand. That's okay. <laughs> thank you for being here. Um, Madam President, Sherry, would you like to address the group or say anything to help us wrap up? Um, no, other than this was great. I really, I really enjoyed um, uh, listening to this whole conversation. And it was very, very helpful um, for me to hear from all of you. And I'm excited that there's excitement for the Beyond the MMC program. And um, I'm going, we're going to be looking to the institute directors to play a large part in this. Um, and, but yeah, it was just, this was a, this was a great three hours um, for me as we move forward this year. So thank you. Thank you, Madam President. Chris, would you like to close us out? Just 
want to thank everybody for joining us. I want to thank uh, staff for doing a great job and Ashley for facilitating. And I really enjoyed all the input and I took some pretty good notes that I will share with um, our president and the board. And uh, it's exciting. A lot of good things coming down the road with education from beyond the MMC to possibly uh, doing more with our CMCs and uh, MMCs right now. So thank you all for joining us. Thank you so much. And as a reminder, we are aiming for an in-person colloquium in 2022, as Institute Director Kim Jones has very kindly in capital letters dropped in the chat box, come to Little Rock in 2022. Hopefully we will all be able to be together in person. If you need anything, um, feel free, always reach out. I look forward to seeing all of you in the future and thank you for your time today. Have a great week and we will see you and talk with you soon.